Should have come up here earlier. Make sure I knew where I wanted to put all my stuff. <laughs> Sorry about that. As long as it don't spill on my foot, it'll be okay. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, for Naomi and I, I know for y'all it's been a lot longer, but for Naomi and I, probably for the last six or eight weeks, I've been waiting for this day to hurry up and get here. Uh, I know y'all been been waiting a lot longer than we have. But uh, as soon as, as God just put it on our hearts that, that he was going to move us and that this was the place, uh, as, as tough as it is to leave a good church, uh, I was ready to be where I know God wanted us to be. And that's right here at Friendship Baptist Church. So I want to go ahead and, and apologize if, in the next, if today or next Sunday or tonight or whenever, if, if Monticello Baptist pops out in the midst of a conversation, just forgive me for at least the first week or two, okay? Uh, because I've been used to saying that for 10 and a half years, but I'm going to do my best to, to remember where I'm at <laughs> and, uh, and just, man, enjoy the, the love that uh, all of you folks have given to us so far, and, and we are blessed beyond measure. Uh, we are blessed beyond measure, first of all, because we know this is where God wants us to be. But secondly, we are blessed beyond measure because so many of you have been so gracious to us, talking about how you love us and you don't even know us, and, and honestly, we love you and we don't even know you. Uh, some of you I know a little bit about, and that's scary, I'll go ahead and say that, but <laughs> You know, but y'all know who I'm talking about. I mean, so it's not really that scary to y'all. Uh, it's just a blessing to be here. Uh, it's a blessing to be in God's house always, no matter where we are at. Uh, it's always a blessing to worship. And so thank you for coming and just being with us today. If you're visiting with us today, I am too. Uh, you know, at the end of the service today, Naomi will come forward and we'll move our letter here. So I'm still visiting technically uh, to the end of the service, at least today. But if you're visiting with us today, thank you for coming. Uh, there's one thing I want. If God wants you here, I want you here. And uh, I've always believed in my heart of hearts that God builds his church and that he will build Friendship Baptist Church to be exactly what Friendship Baptist Church needs to be. And uh, we're not the church for everybody, but I want us to be the church for the people that God wants to have right here. And when we come together as a body of believers, man, God can do anything. Uh, when we worship Him and serve Him and do what He calls us to do, he, they, they, it's, it's limitless what we can do here at Friendship Baptist Church. So thank you for coming and being here with us today. And, and uh, thank you for not putting a clock back there on the back wall yet. Uh, <laughs> because the sermon hadn't even started yet, but I'll get there in a moment. But uh, it's just a blessing to be in God's house with you all today. <laughs> Ricky's got his sign. Okay, I see you back there. Hey, I'll go ahead and tell you now, if you're going to talk to me during the service, I'm going to talk back, okay? Uh, that's just who I am. You know, I don't mind going that way too. So uh, let's pray, okay? Let me get started. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Uh, it is a beautiful day. It is the Lord's day. Thank you so much for giving all of us an opportunity to worship you today. Father, may we never take it for granted. Father, I thank you for where you have brought Naomi and I. Uh, this is now home. And Father, as we worship here, as we serve here, as we serve you here, Father, lead and guide us to do everything you would have us to do. Father, work through me to be who you want me to be here at Friendship Baptist Church. Help me to be the pastor that they need, the friend that they need. Father, just be the believer that I'm supposed to be. Father, that this church will be everything you want it to be. Father, not anything else. Not to fall short, Father, and not to go in different directions, but to be everything you want Friendship Baptist Church to be. Father, that is my prayer. And I pray this prayer in the name of my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Listen, uh, this morning I want to talk to you a little bit about taking a stand. 
I believe there are some things that that you and I as Christians can do and need to be doing in our hearts. And I know that this is not an exhaustive list. I could have probably put a lot of things on there. Uh, But we live in a world today where there is so much compromise. We live in a world today where the things are are just not the way they're supposed to be. It's it's not that way in our in our government. It's not that way in our schools. It's shall I say at times it's it's not that way in our churches if we're not careful. And it can even not be that way in our own individual lives. But I want to share with you this morning. You know, we we love as as Christians, we talk about prayer. And I know you have prayed for me way before I knew who me was. Okay, and I appreciate that. But I want to tell you something this morning. There are some things in the Bible that we don't have to pray about. There are some things that just the Bible tells us this is how it is. And so that's what I want you to talk about this morning. There are some things that we as believers in Christ, that we as born again believers in Christ need to take a stand on. And if we can begin the process of of being who God wants us to be and take a stand on some of these rock solid principles that we find in God's word, then we're going to be able to move forward and do what God wants us to do and, and be who God wants us to be. And so this morning... I know there's going to be a lot of scripture text and things that are there, but just this morning out of Ephesians chapter six, okay, Ephesians chapter six, beginning with verse 10, we see as, as Paul is talking to the Ephesian Ephesian church there, and he's beginning to talk about the armor of God and, and all of those things there. He says, finally be strengthened by the Lord, by his vast strength, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil, spiritual forces in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having prepared everything to take your stand. And verse 14 says those first two words to stand therefore. And this morning, that's what I want to share with you, the concept and the idea about. I want us to stand. Let me share a few thoughts of things that we need to stand on this morning. We need to take a definite stand on salvation. You hear me? On salvation. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 says, For you are saved by grace through faith. It is not of yourselves. It is God's gift, not from works, so that no one should boast. Ladies and gentlemen, Salvation only comes through a personal knowledge of Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, period. I'm sorry, but we live in a world where that is being compromised all around us. There are folks who believe, well, if I'm good enough, God's going to let me into heaven. That is not scriptural. That is not biblical. That is not what Tim McCaffrey is going to take a stand on. Tim McCaffrey is going to take a stand on what God's word says. And God's word says that I am unworthy. Man, it is a God's gift. It is by God's grace and God's mercy that I have an opportunity to know him and to call him the Lord and Savior of my life. He has given me that gift. And ladies and gentlemen, praise the Lord. It's just like Christmas. When Christmas rolls around and there's Christmas presents under the tree, how many of you have ever left your Christmas present unopened? That's what I thought. You know, we don't do that, do we not? When the Christmas present's under the tree and our name is on it, we want to open that present. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the gift God has given us is salvation. Maybe you are here this morning and you've experienced, you've seen the gift. You see how beautiful the wrapping of that gift is. You know the story of Jesus Christ. You know that he died on the cross for your sins. Okay, you understand the concept of what's there. But that gift of salvation, you've never opened the gift. You've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart. You've never asked him to save you and to be the Lord and Savior of your life. I want to tell you something this morning. You've got to take a stand on what salvation really is. You've got to take a stand on the idea that salvation, that the way of salvation is, is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. John tells us in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Um, some of you know, maybe... 
a few of you at least know that I've traveled different places around the world. Uh, on mission trips and doing some different things of that nature. And I've been able and been blessed to, to travel to the, to the nation of Indonesia five different times. And there's a people group that's there, and I'm going to be very careful of, how, of what I say this morning uh, on, because I know this is on the Internet and different things like that. But there's a people group there that I've been praying for, that our church has prayed for, that is kind of very near and dear to my heart. And we were talking to one of those individuals one day from this people group. And in this people group, as far as we know, as Southern Baptists, there is not a single individual from that people group that knows Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. And we were talking to one of those individuals one day, of course, through the interpreter there and sharing with him and trying to just get to know him a little bit and asking him about his faith and his belief system, of course, is, is Muslim and, and things of that nature. And he made this statement that he called the name of the people group that he's a part of. He said, all of us are Muslim. And I thought to myself for a moment, every single person in that people group is going to die and go to hell because the only way to heaven is Jesus. You know, we talk to him and let him know that. Say, well, our belief is different. We believe in Jesus. We believe not that as you believe that he was just a prophet. We believe that he really was the son of God, that he really can take care of your sins. He didn't get it. Everybody in the world around us is not going to get it ladies and gentlemen. But I want you to understand we stand firm. I stand firm. I think you stand firm. I'm going to lead this church to stand firm on the idea and concept that there is only one way to heaven and his name is Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. In Romans, excuse me, Revelations chapter 22, verse 17, John writes, But the Spirit and the bride say, Come. Let anyone who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life as a gift. You know, we also live in a world today where there are those who believe that everyone can't find salvation. That is not your new pastor. I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that everyone has the opportunity to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. I'll be honest with you. I don't understand what happens in the darkest, deepest jungles of life. I don't, I don't have all the answers, but I know that God does and that he is the answer. And that everyone who desires to come unto him can know him as Lord and Savior. And even those in the darkest, deepest, deepest jungles somewhere around the world, the Bible says you can look at creation and know that there is a God. God will work it out for them. God will take care of them. And he knows their hearts. And he knows where they stand with him. And I tell you this morning, the coverage of salvation is one that can cover all. It does not matter this morning what you may have done in your life. It does not matter how big the sin may be in your life. I want you to understand something this morning. Jesus covers, the blood of Jesus covers your sin. There's not anything you can do that can be so terrible that Jesus can't love you and forgive you through it. And I also want you to understand this. Believers that are here this morning, you may have made a lot of mistakes in your life. I got saved when I was eight years old. There's a whole lot more sin in the life of Tim McCaffrey from the time that I became a Christian than it was before I became a Christian. Even though I've heard the stories of how terrible I was as a small kid, okay? But either, either way, as long as I've been alive, there's been a whole lot more since eight years old than before eight years old. And Jesus has forgiven me of every single one of those sins. So this morning, I want us to take a stand on salvation. It is through Jesus Christ himself and no one else. But not only do we take a stand on what salvation means, I want us also to take a stand on the idea of separation. And by that, I actually mean biblical separation. 
The reason for separation is this. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, it says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in this world. I understand that. We all understand that. As Christians, we live in this terrible, sinful world. But the Bible tells us we are not to be a part of this world. What we need to do as believers in Jesus Christ is draw the line of separation and say, I may live in this world, but I live for Jesus. I may live in this world, but I'm going to act like a child of God. I may live in this world, but it's up to me to be the man and the woman and the young person and whomever. It's up to me to be the person God wants me to be so I can do what I'm supposed to do for his kingdom. And I'm going to just tell you this morning, I want you to be the very best believer you can be. I don't care where you think you stand in your relationship with Christ right now. I don't, it doesn't matter where Tim McCaffrey stands in his relationship with Christ right now. I know in my heart of hearts that I can do more. I can be better. I need to work at it every single day. And ladies and gentlemen, you do too. Plain and simple. You do too. Man, we live in this world. Hey, <laughs> it's tough. We go and, and, and the, you go to Walmart. You know, there's a lot of things happen at Walmart. You go to Walmart and, and, and I'll be honest with you, for the last few days I've had to go in there and different things and, and I'm looking at all these people and I'm thinking, do y'all go to Friendship? <laughs> I really am. I, I run across this guy the other day. We were in the same checkout line together. He looked so familiar to me. I said, hey, to him and introduced and said, hey, how you doing? I said, do you go to Friendship Baptist Church? He said, no. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you did. I, he just looked so familiar. I thought I'd seen him right here. It was not him. I, I don't know who you were, but it was not you, you know. Luckily, he didn't get mad at me. Man, we live out in that world. And that old world is tough and that old world is sinful. But when we walk out into this, when we live out in that world, we are supposed to be God's children. We're supposed to be different. You know, I, I'll be honest. I, I want the reputation of, of Friendship Baptist Church to be those folks are different. They're not like everybody else. Those folks, man, they, they act like Jesus. They got a little craziness going on out there. Okay. I mean, I'm, I've lived with Naomi long enough. I've caught on. There's a little craziness out there in the world, okay? You know? It is what it is. This idea of being biblically separated is there. The purpose of that, it says, from 1 Corinthians 9, uh, chapter 9, verses 26, 27. So I do not run like the one who runs aimlessly or box like one beating the air. Instead, I discipline my body and bring it under strict control so that after preaching to others, I myself may not be disqualified. Man, Paul, hey, here's Paul. Man, if there's anybody other than Jesus Christ in the New Testament who was an awesome man of God, here is Paul is saying, man, I've got to be careful. I've got to discipline myself. I've got to pay attention to how I live and what I do so that I don't become disqualified. Ladies and gentlemen, church, please don't disqualify, disqualify yourself by the mistakes that you make because the world around you is watching. I've had folks that I, I've met through this week and they, oh, oh, you're the new pastor at Friendship Baptist Church. Man, that's awesome. You know, man, they've been praying for a pastor for all this time. That's great. I understand. I've been in this long enough. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been in this long enough. My wife has been in it her whole life as a preacher's child that, that people watch us. But I want to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. They don't just watch the pastor and his wife. They watch the deacons. They watch the Sunday school teachers. They watch folks who say, oh, I'm a member at Friendship. Your friends, your family, others around you. They know that you claim to be a child of God. Act like one. We've got to. We're supposed to. In our hearts, in our lives. Just to stand tall. 
Man, to take a stand and to be what God would have us to be through our salvation, through this biblical separation, through our Christian service. In John chapter 4, verse 35, John, Jesus says, Don't you say, there are still four more months and then comes the harvest. Listen to what I am telling you. Open your eyes and look at the fields because they are ready for harvest. You see, ladies and gentlemen, not only are we supposed to take a stand about salvation, it is through Christ and Christ alone. Not only should we take that stand of being biblically separated, being a child of God out in the world in which we live. But I tell you what, if we're a child of God, it's time to serve him. Biblical service. I want to ask you something this morning, and I have no clue to the answer to this question. But what do you do here? What do you do here? Nothing? Walk through the door and attend service? I'm glad that you're here. And if you're visiting with us for just a moment, just kind of step to the side, okay? But if you're a member of Friendship Baptist Church, and I'm not even a member yet, but if you're a member of Friendship Baptist Church, what do you do here? I don't find it anywhere biblically where the Bible says that you can become a member of a church and then do nothing. I don't see that biblically, folks. I don't. And so I want you to serve. I want you, give me a week or two, okay? But if you're not doing anything in this church, I want you to come see me. I want you to find Ken. I want you to find Celeste. I want you to find one of these deacons that are running around here. Okay? I didn't plan on doing this, but here we go. Because everybody may not know. If you're a deacon at this church, stand up for a moment. Just stand up just a moment. If you're a deacon... Stand up for just a moment. These are, these are the other folks, okay? I think you know who Celeste is. You know who Ken is. Hopefully you know who I am. Y'all go ahead and sit back down. That's all I needed for just a moment. But if you're a member of this church and you're not, you're not doing anything, find somebody that just stood up, find me, find the staff, and you say, Brother Tim, I want to do something. God has put it on my heart. I need to be doing something. I need to be serving at Friendship Baptist Church. Is it your church? It is. Take hold of it. Take part of it. Man, I promise you this, okay? I don't know exactly what it is at this moment, but I promise you this. You come up to Brother Tim and you say, Brother Tim, I want to do something around here. I will find you something to do. Now, I'm going to step aside for a moment, okay? This is kind of the other side of the flower pot. When we get over here, it's kind of getting real. Step over here for just a moment. All right. When you come to me and say you want to do something, don't don't tell me you want to start at the top. Because I don't know where the top is, to be really honest with you. Don't come to me with the expectations of I want to do so and so. Just come to me and say, Brother Tim, I just want to serve. I'll find out what you need to do because I'll find out who you are. I'll find out the gifts that God has given to you. And we'll put you, we'll plug you in somewhere. Biblical service. You are here to serve the Lord. And that biblical service gives you an opportunity to have that, to, to be that service and to receive that reward of service. First Thessalonians chapter 2, 19 and 20 says, for who is our hope, our joy, our crown of boasting in the presence of our Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not, is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and joy. Man, a, a crown of boasting, you know, Paul talks about there. There comes an opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, when, here's the deal. I want you to serve and I want you to fall in love with Friendship Baptist Church the way Naomi and I have already and the way I know that love is going to grow. I want you to love this church so much and what it represents so much that you are willing to do whatever it takes to make this church what God wants it to be. You hear me? That means yes. You hear me? 
Okay. You can talk back to me and I won't call you out and when I ask a question like that, it'll be okay. Hey guys, this is our church. This is your church. Man, we're, we're here to do this together. I'll go ahead and tell you right now, I'm one person. I cannot do this by myself. No way. Brother Bob, I'm glad he's here with us this morning. He was here for 13 years. I hope to break your record, brother. <laughs> I really do. But he couldn't do it by himself. It took a lot, of he- a lot of help along the way. I can't do it by myself. I can promise you that I'll stand up here and try to share God's word from the pulpit. I promise you that when you're sick, I'll try to be at the hospitals every time I can. I promise you I'll pray for you and I'll be there for you. I'll do everything that as a pastor and a friend that I can do. But I can't do it by myself. It's your service. Your biblical service to Christ that will make Friendship Baptist Church everything God wants it to be. And then real quickly, because I did actually look at my watch there and see what time it was. There's one other thing that we will take a stand on. And this stance that we take here is one that should prepare our hearts and minds and should tell us that we don't have all day. We don't have all year. Because I stand before you this morning and tell you that our Lord and our Savior will come again. There is a second coming of Jesus Christ that is going to touch this church and this world. And it's, and ladies and gentlemen, we need to be ready. Not only do we need to be ready, there are those around us that we know that need Jesus. They need to be ready. In John chapter 14, verse 2, it says, In my Father's house are many rooms. If not, I would have told you. I am going away to prepare a place for you and... If I go and prepare a place for you, I'll be there with you. Man, what a blessing that is. I've got two grandkids, and I'll be honest with you. The world we live in today, sometimes I just have to pray, Lord, would you go ahead and come back and take my grandkids and take me and let's get out of this place. I mean, it's tough sometimes. To think about what my grandkids may have to go through 30, 40, 50 years from now. It's tough to think about that. I pray. Naomi's dad is a a minister as well. And uh, it always blessed my heart when we would all get together before they would leave the house or something and pray. And and he would always pray that, that our family circle would not be broken in heaven. And so all of our children are believers, have three, have a daughter-in-law and a son-in-law and they're believers and this my, my son's fiance and will be daughter-in-law in about seven or eight weeks, seven weeks, whatever. She is a believer as well. So, so far that prayer has been answered. I've got two grandkids, not quite ready there yet age-wise and God will move in their hearts and I just know, I know that God's going to save them. Let me ask you something this morning. If you believe Jesus is coming, who do you know that's not ready? Who do you know that's not ready? Do you have a family friend, a brother or sister even, a mom or dad? And you know that if the Lord was to return right now, Or even more tragically, you know if something was to happen to them and they would lose their life right now, that they would die and go to hell. Through the 30 years that I've been a pastor, or actually a little bit over 30 now, I've done a lot of funerals. Man, I have preached the funerals of some beautiful folks who love the Lord, and man, those were blessings. But as Brother Bob, I'm sure, can attest, when you preach the funeral of an individual that you don't have a clue whether or not they know Jesus, that's tough. And I've even preached through those years, I've preached the funerals of of folks that the family came to me and basically said, Brother Tim, this person was lost. They didn't know Jesus. They didn't want to know Jesus. 
They're, they're in hell right now. That's, that's overwhelming to think about. Who do you know today that needs Jesus? You see, the stand is this. He is coming again. And He is coming again, and so we must be ready. So I ask you this question as well. Are you ready? I don't take for granted this morning in a crowd like this that there's not someone here today who does not know Jesus. Someone here today who, who maybe is a member of this church, but your relationship with Christ is not right. You've, you've joined a church, you've even been baptized, but your heart was never really given to Jesus. But I tell you this morning, He is the only way. There's no other way. And you may fool everyone that's been sitting around you for all of these years, but you cannot fool God. And so I want you to know where your heart is. I can't answer that question for you, but you need to ask and answer that question for yourself. To take a stand. To stand on what salvation is, to take a stand as well for the separation in this world in which we live, to service in which we need to give and with the understanding that Christ is coming again. I close by just saying this. It is the greatest privilege, I believe, someone like me can have when a, God call, when a, when a church calls them to be their pastor. And I thank you for that. I thank you that you've called me to be your pastor. I will do the very best job I can. You have also, whether you realized it or not, you have called me to be your friend. And that's what I want to become, if you'll let me. I love you already. I love you in all kinds of ways, but but I want you to understand that my love for you begins with making sure that you are where you need to be with Christ. That's my, that's my job. <laughs> I don't take it lightly. I don't take lightly the idea that God has put me in a, in a position to, to share His Word that he's put me in a position to have opportunities to share the gospel and talk to people about Jesus and ask people about their salvation and, and share with them what it means to be a believer in Christ and pray with them and hopefully help lead them through the power of the Holy Spirit into a, a relationship with Jesus. I don't take that lightly. I'm here today because God brought me here. I stand today on God's Word with you. I pray God may bless us all. If you're here now through this time, we're going to start our invitation. If you're here now, God is speaking to your heart. If you need to come to this altar and pray, uh, I guess this is going to be the side you're going to come to today. That's okay. Okay. But if you're here today and you say, Brother Tim, I just want to talk to you for a couple of moments. Come see me. I know I'm new here. But I can say this about myself because I know who I am. I am the best secret keeper you know. I really am. I do not talk to my wife about things that are brought to me. Now, if you want my wife to know something that you and I have talked about, you need to go talk to my wife. I don't do that. What you say to me is between me and you and the Lord. And so I'm here today to serve you, to stand together, 
to be what God has called me to be for you. And if he's spoken to your heart today, I invite you to come. Let's stand and sing.